Hi, my name is Glenn and welcome to my next project. In this episode, I am going to refinish my bathroom cabinets. Now these cabinets are identical to those that we have in our kitchen. And if you recall a previous episode, I stripped off all the old paint and filled the grain and covered with paint. Now the bathroom I wanna leave natural because recently my wife was looking at our nightstands and thought they were looking a little bit shabby. So she asked me what they looked like underneath the paint. So I sanded it all down, took about an hour, and it was beautiful. Covered it with Danish oil and voila, we have two new pieces of furniture in our bedroom. Not new, but they sure look new. And every time I look at them, I love them. They're really beautiful. So we really wanted to have that same look in the bathroom, our master bath, which is connected to the bedroom, visibly connected, not through a, a, an additional door. So I used a heat gun to strip off all the paint. That went well enough, but then we found the wood was a little too red. So now I get to try my hand at either bleaching that red out or some other method. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. All the learning I did in this process of bleaching and refinishing red oak. So I'll see you at the other side. There were a couple holes here in the front of the drawer. I think from possibly me drilling from the backside or putting in some screws from the backside that went a little too long. So I'm drilling them out a bit because there's paint in there and then I fill them with clear epoxy. And despite a heat gun and any chemicals I used and different fancy sanders, there's still no getting away from using something like a small flathead screwdriver to gouge out all that paint in the little heads and cracks and corners and grooves. All right, here I am mixing one and a half tablespoons of lye into two cups of water. Now I'm applying Whoop. the hydrogen peroxide. This is your regular 3% that you buy at the pharmacy. I apply that to the wood and then I apply the water lye solution and let it dry. Oh, look at the yellow coming up already. What the heck? I thought the bleach was gonna take the color out, not add a dark green to it. I made a big boo-boo. In other words, a dumb mistake. A mistake that I knew better, but because I was feeling impatient and for no real reason, I did not have any kind of time limit at all. But whenever you do something new, you should always test it first before you do it on all of your medium that you're working on. So I attempted to bleach out the red from my red oak and instead it turned green. Um, well, not instead, I got all of the red out and, and I guess there's green hidden underneath. I, I don't quite know what happened. But I did follow the recipe. I applied the hydrogen peroxide first. So the recipe called for three tablespoons of lye in a quart of water. I used one and a half tablespoons in a pint of water, which should have been the same ratio. After I applied the hydrogen peroxide to the wood, I applied the lye water solution with this little foam brush and I let it dry. The interesting thing is that while I was doing it, the water was turning more and more yellow. And by the time I was done, it was a dark amber, which clearly tells me that the color is coming out immediately and I was putting it back in with the brush just by going back and forth with it. And 
if I was doing a test, I would have only had a small area that turned green, but instead I did everything. So now what I need to do is sand it all down. This is where I've done some sanding already. Now you see I didn't get low enough to get into there, which is going to take a lot of sanding to get through that. But it will be red again, and you can even see that it's red here. So the bottom line is please test something before you do something new if you don't know what it's going to do. And also what I've learned is I'm going to attempt to <laughs> to take the red out again after I sand it all down and then it's red again. I think what happened was either my lye mixture was too strong because my tablespoon was not a, a technical tablespoon. It was just a tablespoon from the kitchen. So maybe I got too much lye. Um, maybe it was on too long and if I wipe it off right away that will that will help. Other than that I don't know what I could have done. I did have the red light on it I don't know if there was some sort of reaction with that. I was just trying to warm it up so it evaporate quicker. Um, so it didn't sit on it all night because it was really only a few hours with the red lights and the fan. It, it evaporated and it was dry. Back to sanding. I don't think I'm going to bore you with, with what that looks like. And for the most part, you know, sanding this part will be easy. It's this bevel around here that is such a pain in the butt especially when we get to this inner bevel, which really cheeses me off. All right, since I neglected to test the bleaching solution, now I'm going to test a bunch of stains to see if I can cover up the color. I'm hoping to cover up the dark green color so I don't have to sand it all down again. Now I can sand it down, it's pretty shallow, but um, if I can just cover it up with a stain, all the better. So if I can cover up the green, great. If that doesn't cover that up, but I can cover the red with some of these stains, with any of these stains, great. So let's see how this test turns out. All right, the pre-stain has dried. Oh, actually it's been about an hour now. So I am going to dab on the whitewash pickling in two places. This is the water base, so here without pre-stain, here with pre-stain. So it's still fresh. I don't know how much time is going to matter, but we have no pre-stain and water pre-stain, and this is white, which is called whitewash pickling. Both of those I don't really see a difference between the pre-stain and the no pre-stain. Then we have weathered gray, which also has um, poly in it, so it should not need a top coat. And then we have the classic gray, which has more brown in it. Now, let's try the same thing over here. This is invisible, the weathered oak. I can't I guess this definitely looks more red. This is just pre-stain, no pre-stain. So it's naked. The white's not coming off. A little bit. Not liking it though. I think I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit longer, then I'll come back and I'll put Dutch oil on it and see what it looks like then. The stain has dried and I presented it to my wife to see which one she liked the best. She likes this one and this one the best. This is the water-based pre-stain, that's all. This is the oil-based stain, simply white, on pre-stain. This is no pre-stain. So I'm gonna put some oil on it right now and see how it changes. All right, I'm using Watco Natural Danish Oil. Let's see what these look like afterwards. All right, I 
think that one's gonna be the winner, but I do see some orange showing through. And this white didn't even, didn't even show up, washed right off. Well, I would say none of the stains worked. There was some of them I couldn't really tell. Um, the one that had the most significant difference was that, that semi-transparent white. And you could still see either the, the dark green behind it or after on the areas I sanded, you could still see the red. And then it looked like it had this whitewash on it, which really was not at all the look that we were going for. So I'm glad I did the testing. I wish I would have done that with the bleaching solution, the lye and peroxide, um, because now after some more searching and um, you know reading, I found a better way to do the same thing. All right, so now it's time to remove everything I put on. All right, I'm gonna try bleaching the wood again with the lye and hydrogen peroxide, but now I have a stronger concentrate of peroxide. It's 27% versus the 3% that I used before. So I'm gonna give this a try on one, on the backside of one of these pieces of wood and see what it does before I move forward to do it to the rest. Cause I really don't wanna to have to sand them again if it doesn't look good. So this would be session three. The first one turned it all green, so I sanded it all down. Used a more concentrated batch of peroxide for the second one. And the third one, I decreased the amount of lye. I used one tablespoon per cup rather than one and a half. All right, I think I'm done bleaching the wood. It only took three, three tries, but four bleaches. So my third effort worked, but I wanted a little bit more out of it. So I put another coat on and then I wiped white vinegar all over it all to neutralize it. Now you see, I got a little too heavy with my sanding there, which is fine because it's the back. However, this is the front and the top. So I don't know what I can do about that. I thought of coloring it in. I have one of these blend fills. Let's see if that does anything that I like. Does that look any better? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe a little bit. It's really just a crayon. I think from a distance, this actually does make it look a little bit better. All right, so here was my test of the Dutch oil. And it's it was a little bit darker here, just like it is there, than there. So this is naked, and this has one coat of oil on it. So it looks pretty good. My wife gave it a thumbs up, so I'm going to go ahead and oil all of these right now. And then I'm going to strip the cabinets. Well, not strip, but bleach them. They've already been stripped of paint, but I'm gonna bleach them so they match here. And then I will put the same thing on it. I will do the exact same process inside as I did right here. So I'm happy. It's not apple juice.
All right, it's finally done. Boy, that uh, quick and easy little job of just removing paint and applying Danish oil sure turned into a chore. Well, I think you know what the chore was, trying to take the red out. So Visine's got it down, but as far as bleaching red oak, it is not reliable. It was easy enough once I was able to locate a high enough concentration of hydrogen peroxide. So once again, it's the 27% hydrogen peroxide solution. Anything less than that is useless. And the lye, I think, was a little bit too strong at one and a half tablespoons per pint or three tablespoons per quart. So I dropped it down to one tablespoon per pint. That seemed to work better. It didn't take as much color off at first, but with multiple applications, it did a better job. So just to rehash what I did, the first one was, the first bleaching was with standard drugstore, 3% hydrogen peroxide and the higher lye solution. Then when after the staining didn't work, then I did a second batch. Um, and that one had the 27% peroxide, still the one and a half tablespoons per pint. Then I lessened the lye. So it's the 27% hydrogen peroxide and the one tablespoon per pint. That worked really well. So I did it again. And that took a little more color out to the point where I liked it. So there was four applications of bleach. The first one was totally removed because I had to sand the wood, sand it all off again. The um, second application still came out a little bit green, but the third and fourth application were great. So there you have it. That's all there is to it. There's not a lot of information on bleaching wood, especially red oak. And I did find that there was some inconsistencies with the process, meaning the wood was left a little bit splotchy. There were some areas where more color left and other areas where the color was a little more tenacious and it stayed behind. But I'm happy with it. My wife's happy with it. I covered it all with a couple coats of Danish oil and then I use a varnish because it is in the bathroom and it gets, it'll get some water dripped on it and things like that. So I put a couple coats of varnish on it. Um, oh, what you didn't see was that aside from the drawer fronts and cabinet doors, I did the, the face of the cabinets as well. So those got the same bleaching process that I found worked. So after I did all the doors, I went in the house and bleached all that. So anyways, there you have it. Thanks for watching my next episode. What will my next episode be? Well, I've got some ideas, but you're going to have to subscribe so you know when my next episode comes out. Because as you know, I'm pretty irregular. But thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button. That'll help me a lot. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you. Be well.